Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, the Grow Group and Discipleship Director, and I'm here with Pastor Ken, who just brought us part three of Prayer Life, where we looked at learning to pray the Jesus way. Hi, Pastor Ken. Welcome to Postscript. Hi, good to have you back with us today. And we looked at the Lord's Prayer as the pattern and also talked about how He teaches us two ways, as a pattern and to recite this prayer. Um, Several, we have some questions that came around and then also some other talking points around the Lord's Prayer. So I'm just going to jump right in and ask some of those. Um, And I like how you divided the prayer into the three, three. two to three and three mm-hmm. sections. And so let's start with talking about the kingdom. Yeah. Um, you sort of transitioned into talking about maybe God's kingdom and bringing sort of an election year um, uh, politics, politics yeah. into that. Can you tell us how well, having a kingdom mindset can help us sure. in an environment yeah. like yeah, this? Yeah, I didn't want to go there in the, in the message, but I, I surely could have. I think a kingdom mindset can really liberate us um, because so many people put their hope in earthly governments, in earthly leaders, in earthly presidents. Um, And no matter how good they are, and you have to define what good is, and everybody disagrees upon that, and yeah, I'm a Republican, I'm a Democrat, and you know, which is God, God's above it all. you're gonna be disappointed at some juncture. Why? Because they're not the king, the king of kings. They're just serving their country as best they think uh, possible. And that's gonna lead to disappointment. Mm -hmm. So does that mean don't vote? No, 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 you should use all the influence that you can to do all the good that you can do in in this life. But I think there's something very freeing when we uh, think back to what St. Augustine was talking about. Yeah, but there's two cities. There's two kingdoms. We're, w- 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 as, as believers, yes, we're in the, the city of the kingdom of this world, but we're also residents of the city of God, mm-hmm. the, the, the kingdom of God. And that's going to be the ultimate prevailing kingdom. And so let's live out as best we can in this fallen uh, kingdom. Uh, you know, b- serving, as I tried to say in the message, as, as his construction crew to lay the foundation. And, but ultimately, only Jesus brings the king, kingdom. Um, not, you know, any of the candidates that are still remaining, not any of the candidates that aren't still remaining. Um, so I think it's freeing, actually. It is, thinking that there's a bigger yeah. picture than yeah. that. Um, So we think about daily bread. Um, You often hear people say, and uh, many people say, well, I I feel bad praying for my needs. There's a lot bigger needs. There's people who have other bigger needs. needs. Yeah, Yeah. And isn't God maybe busier with those? Yeah, right. Yeah, I remember talking to a man some years ago who was saying that very matter-of-factly. Uh, I don't pray for myself, really. You never, no, I just, I wouldn't feel right about it. Well, why don't you feel right about that? Well, because there's all these problems out there and I need to, he's got bigger fish to fry and blah, blah, blah. And I was tempted to say to him, uh, well, then do you want to whisper your needs to me and I'll lift them up for you? Which I resisted the temptation to do. But I, I think here again, the Lord's Prayer is very freeing and inviting to all of us because he doesn't say if your life is generally uh, bad right now, you say, our Father who art in heaven, give us, you know, he, he doesn't say if you make this amount of money, but not that amount of money, you're eligible. If you're, if you're in this income bracket, you don't need to be brand. You got it made. He, he tells all of us, this is for you, mm-hmm. you're my child, mm-hmm. our Father, who art in heaven. And so I think here again, it's, it's very exciting and very liberating to, to, to realize he, he wants to hear from all mm-hmm. of us. 
Now, if what a person is feeling maybe is a little bit of uh, conviction about the fact that they have been blessed, that they have so much, that, you know, m maybe the action step f for you is not to cease from praying, but to roll up your sleeves and, and say, so God, what do you want me to do? You've given me so many blessings and I'm gonna keep praying that you'll give me more. I want you to use me as an agent of light and love and hope and, 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 and all for Christ. Maybe that's what the proper response would be if you're feeling sort of a, a, a guilt. I've got it good, I'm not gonna bother God. To, to, he said, but you're not a bother, I'm your father too. So maybe that may be helpful. Good, and so we talked a lot about forgiving others. Yeah. And this question came in, when you talk about forgiving others, you talked about brothers and sisters and forgiving them. Does that mean we should only forgive other Christians? Oh. Since the verse seems universal. Okay, the, yeah. Then can, I, you the, clarify, let's, clear, yeah. can you clarify that? No, right. I just meant men and women. Uh, the, and so, yeah, let's not get too literal about that. He, it, he's calling us to be agents of forgiveness mm -hmm the same way that he was to us before we were Christians, mm -hmm. um, we're called to forgive. Why does he call us to do that? Because until we forgive, we're the ones in bondage. And that's the, the delusional thing about it all. We convince ourselves, if I let him off the hook, then he would go free. No, if you let him off the hook, if you forgave, you would be free. You're the one who's dragging the ball and chain around your legs mm -hmm. uh, because you won't uh, release. Regardless of if he's a Christian or not, the, le the ground is level. We're all sinners. Mm -hmm. Some of us sinners know Christ and we're Christian sinners and saved sinners and others aren't, but we're all saved. Uh, we're all sinners. And those of us who are saved, we know that we're saved by grace. And that's why he says, now that you know what I've forgiven you of, I want you to do that, regardless of whether they're a Christian or not. Okay, that's yeah. good. And so another note Sorry about this, yeah. is this prayer for everyone? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I think we have to go with a no mm -hmm. on that. Um, why would I say no? Well, because we start by saying our Father. And I think people uh, today in this pluralistic PC world, many times um, you'll hear people say, well, we're all children of God. And in a way of speaking, that is absolutely true. If you, you know, are born and you're alive and you have a pulse, you were created by God. You are in that regard, a, a child of God. We're all children of God by creation. But why did Christ come into the world uh, and offer himself as a sacrifice? So that we might become his children by recreation. So that we might not just be born, but that we might be born again. So that we might not just have a normal pulse, but so that our heart would beat quickly for the things of God. And so it's to this group he's saying, this is, uh, he's teaching his disciples here. And so the prior business that one would need to take care of if one has not said, I want you to be my father in a salvific or a saving way, not just a creation sort of way, but I want you to become my father through Christ the Savior. Uh, the action step for you is not to start in on the Lord's Prayer and the six segments and this or anything. The action step for you most immediately is give your heart and your life to Jesus and trust in Christ and become his child by recreation. Good, good points. And I just think as looking at it, as we have looked at all, all the pieces of prayer, why we pray, mm. how we pray, mm. it's just been such a good series on strengthening our prayer life. So thank you for yes. that. And thank you for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you right back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.